you? An idiot sandwich. Idiot sandwich what? An idiot sandwich, Chef Ramsay. What's up, Flick fans? Welcome back to the channel. I love cooking shows. Hell's Kitchen, Kitchen Nightmares, Chopped, Mythical Kitchen, anything that takes place in the kitchen, I'm a massive fan of. So when I saw the trailer for the menu, I said to myself, what? What is this? That's a good feeling to have. Let's talk about this movie. A young couple travels to a remote island to eat at an exclusive restaurant where the chef has prepared a lavish menu with some shocking surprises. This movie is rated R for strong, disturbing, violent content, language throughout, and some sexual references. So I saw the rating and the trailer and then the cast, and we'll get in the cast here in just a second, said this is, <laughs> it has to be a thriller of some sorts, if not a horror movie. And I would firmly put it in the thriller category. It never uh, veers too far in the outlandish or the pure horror genre, but it didn't have to, thankfully. And in this review, I don't want to spoil any of the major plot points or uh, kind of what this is all about, but I am going to talk about some story points. So if you want to know absolutely nothing, maybe come back once you see it, but I am not going to spoil any of the major surprises here. Let's start with this cast. Ray finds this is going to be an obvious statement, but he's outstanding in the majority of his roles, and he's great here again. He is the type of subdued yet aggressive when he needs to be chef that will keep you on edge just by looking at you. That's exactly what this movie needs, but he's kind of going up against a few characters here, but the main character here that gives him a lot of trouble, maybe more than some of these other guests, is Anya Taylor-Joy, who is accompanied by Nicholas Holt. You also have Reed Bernie and Judith Light, John Leguizamo, uh, Rebecca Kuhn. It's a cast that is just stacked. Here's what I loved about the menu. The focus isn't just on one thing. We're not only focused on the presentation of the food to these guests. We're not only focused on the style of what this movie is trying to be or trying to accomplish because with every course, we get some text on screen describing that course and describing a kind of the intricate details that are also presented by our chef and his sous chefs. And some of these sous chefs, they have personalities, others do not. They're just kind of the random chef cronies in the background that will do whatever Ray Fiennes says and who could blame them. I mean, if Ray Fiennes told me to get in the kitchen and cook, I would do it. Not even in this, but just in real life. But Anya Taylor-Joy's Margot, she's a character that feels out of place, almost as if she doesn't belong on this tier of individuals, but not for the reasons that maybe they think that they believe they could be above her or above a lot of people. I mean, to afford such fine dining and cuisine, you have to be on another level. And some of these individuals here, they believe that. They believe that they maybe are bigger or better than others, but she's just kind of along for the ride. And Nicholas Holt's character, he's so excited to be here. He's excited about the food, his love of culinary arts, and everyone gathered around here, they're talking about the details of the meal and, uh, you know, where this scallop landed at birth and how it survived all the way to the plate. It's not that detailed, but it's along those lines. I like taking a look at how higher class individuals uh, perceive certain things that maybe someone like me or one of us watching uh, could be looking at and saying, that's just, it's a scallop on a plate. But there is something of an understanding of the types of foods that are being presented here and how they fit together, how they mesh together. Now that's not BS. I've had some incredible, expensive, higher class food in my day. I've also had food that tries to say that it's that, but I've eaten it and kind of called BS on that. And these are the types of meals that are being presented to our individuals here. And it's whether or not they accept what they're being given or if they're kind of willing to be along for the ride as we go throughout the evening and eat these courses and strange things begin to happen, things that will keep you on the edge of your seat, that will keep you enthralled, guessing as to what's going to happen next. And even in the moments to where you think you're fully aware of what's about to happen with the next course or what a character is doing, something else Almost the opposite of what you believe is going to happen happens and you're like, oh my god, this is a well-written, well-weaved-together script that keeps it tight all the way through. Austin, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, until we get to the end, the final 20 minutes or so, it's hard to poke holes in what they're doing because it's such a simple concept. All of these individuals are in this one room for most of the movie. I would say 
80% of the film is in this one room, and they're just kind of having to accept what is happening to them, what is happening with this food, and they must be attentive to this chef, to Ray Fiennes, who walks in and the air gets sucked out of the room. And I've been there. Like, I've been in the same room as, like, Denzel Washington. When he walks in, everybody's like, oh, was I, I sense a disturbance. That's how everyone treats and, and should have treated this chef because he walks in and you're just like, whoa. I mean, sure, he does clap really loud a couple of times, so that would also get your attention. <laughs> the filmmaking here is outstanding. Let's look at Mark Millard's prior efforts. Succession, Game of Thrones, Shameless as a director. I don't think I need to look any further. That's the background, and now he's presented us with this film. Yeah. Keep going, buddy. But I love these tense dialogues and conversations. I wasn't really feeling the film until we all gather in this one room. Prior to that, I was like, okay, this is kind of conventional dialogue. We're clearly doing the setup portion of the movie, but now we are here. And from then on out, the movie flows and works and really does keep you gripped almost the entire time. Now the end, the end is full of moments where characters could have made decisions or could have said something along the way that maybe would have changed the outcome, but instead there are scenes where people just kind of sit and wait on something else to happen, and I'm thinking to myself, and our chef even says it at one point, why didn't you try harder to do one thing? It just kind of, I don't know, it left me a bit sour on certain moments where I'm like, I don't know if the decision making, and even in those scenes, the script doesn't work as well as it did prior, but this movie was so entertaining and so intense. I walked away not thinking about that as much because I just enjoyed the journey so much, the destination being a bit faulty didn't really bother me. I also get a kick out of people saying, yes, chef, in unison. Maybe that's why I like these Food Network shows. Before I give you my score, if you're here and you like this content, you like this channel, first of all, how you doing? Second of all, if you want to drop a like down below, man, that would be awesome. Help this channel. We're trying to get to like 140, 150K. We can get there, maybe. I don't know. Uh, the menu is shocking, gripping, and full of jaw-dropping moments. Food fans will get their fill, but anyone who loves an intense thriller will have an excellent time with this one. Anya Taylor-Joy is a badass, and Ray Fiennes commands your attention. I loved this movie. Again, it gets a little wacky towards the end, but I'm easily willing to forgive that just because the experience itself was so good. I'm going a 90% with my score. Yeah, that seems high, but again, this is just such a tight movie and it's so different, and I love food shows. So maybe I'm biased. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know you're watching this one in theaters this weekend. What's your favorite sit-down chain restaurant? There's a question for you. I'll see you soon.